point is a pool of floating turds. <laughs> Absolute middle of nowhere. So, this morning we're heading down to get a wheel alignment. The other week you would have seen there we had a bit of a barney um, in Lancel and Sand Dunes. And ever since then it, the truck's been pulling to the left. So, I'm guessing that, yeah. Something, something's going to miss there. We've, we've knocked it out of alignment, I'm hoping. Hoping that something's not bent. Um, but yeah, I'd say we've got adjustable uppers and stuff in there, so it doesn't take much of a hit to knock one of those bolts. You know, it only has to move a tiny bit and you're out of alignment. So hopefully we'll get that lined up and sorted out today um, because tomorrow we're leaving Perth to head north towards, we're heading towards Broome. Um, you know, there are a heap of stops along the way, but that's the sort of general direction. And then we're going to be doing the gib and stuff. So, yeah, I want to make sure the truck's Mickey Mouse before we start doing any of that. And at the moment, yeah, it's it's driving pretty pretty rubbish. So, all sorted. So, the boys down here have, um, yeah, lined us all back up. They said it was pretty far out, which is which is good. It's not, uh, there's no damage there or anything. Shouldn't be pulling to the left, so we should be able to jet it tomorrow and start heading north. expectations for it. it's just like a you know, everyone talks about it as an overnighter but it's definitely a really nice overnighter it's called um, Woburn Rocks it's about three hours from um, Perth along the Great Northern Highway so for us heading inland and up sort of toward um, Port Hedland this is such a good spot three hours is sort of you know we don't really like driving more than that with Lai. Here are the Woburn Rocks <laughs> which Lila is exploring and Reese is getting us set up, getting some wood ready for our fire, and we're going to be enjoying an epic sunset. Tonight's the first night in the van for a few weeks. Um, and we actually did like a little bit of sleep training, which was um, full on, but so amazing. Like she has made so much progress in like the week that we've been doing it for. So I'm really interested to see how she's going to go in the van. So she's, she's back in the cot because she was trying to like crawl away when, when she was like upset that we would walk away for a minute. Um, so she's in the cot and we just put her down and reassure her, sing her a song, um, you know, make sure she's happy. Yeah. And then sort of give her some space to try and work on self-settling. Um, so it worked. She In maybe like three or four days, she got from like crying a lot, which was really hard for us and for her, to sleeping. Like she literally, the last couple of nights, she cried for maybe like a minute. And then she was just asleep in all of her day sleeps as well. So tonight's going to be the test whether that will continue or whether the change of scenery will set her back to um, square one, which I really hope it doesn't. What are you cooking? Just a little chicken curry. We are uh, we got to camp a little late today, so we thought do something a little bit easy. Just got Ooh, a little chicken coconut delish. curry. It's actually cranking in there. I might, might even move that. Um, and hot tip for you guys: if you're doing uh, any campfire cooking, get yourself a welding glove. These things, man, dynamite. So good. I don't know how we would do the whole camp oven business without that glove. Yeah, it's a mission. Um, for this, like, you just pick your wood up, you pick your coals up, you pick your pot up, do whatever you need to do. Um, and yeah, I mean, like, if you're looking for a cheap way to cook, get yourself one of these. You 
save yourself on gas, save yourself on everything. So, how is it? Really good, eh? All quick, is, quick recap. <clears throat> what's in it? Yeah, all it is is um, curry powder, chicken stock, like garlic, onion, um, a few veggies, chicken, and I've just got a bit of brown sugar, a bit of fish sauce. What else did I chuck in there? Bit of salt and pepper. I think that's a bit. Oh, and a bit of coconut cream. I think that's about it. Nice. It's pretty easy. You like just chuck, chuck sort of whatever in there, but. Mm. <laughs> is it good? Well, look at those hands going. It must be good. Good morning. We had, wow, such a good night. Mm. So I said last night that it was going to be a test and we'd see how we go um, with Lila sleeping and everything. And she, not a peep. She was amazing. She slept Damn. so good. Yeah. Um, so we're buzzing a little bit this morning. Pretty amazing. Well rested. We are. We're well, well rested. rested. We had like a few hours to ourselves last night, which was so lovely. So um, so yeah, definitely happy. It doesn't look like our, um, like sleep training has gone back to square one. It's definitely, um, still on the up, which is amazing. Mm. Um, yeah. and yeah, our new yeah. setup, these curtains we've installed. Yes. Uh, um, working really well. So we're going to do a van tour probably next episode, do you think? Maybe not. Yeah. In the in, next in the next couple yeah. of episodes, we're going to do a van tour and show you um, how we've set up the van um, and how you can set up a van and set up a touring rig for not a million dollars, which mm. is something we looked for heaps when we were like researching the trip. Sure. That's... So if you're looking at like, yeah, cost effective, like an affordable setup, um, this could be useful for you, so stay tuned and, and we'll show you how we've set up our um, pretty affordable secondhand van. So yeah, these curtains, oh, so good. They're like they're just from Spotlight Blackout curtains. I'll um, probably talk a bit more about them when we um, when we do the van tour, but we just close them off and then we can have like um, the lights on in our section and then Lila's set up here on the cot platform. Um, and then during the day we're planning to do the reverse so Lila's cot will be on the bed and then we'll be in here and we can sort of black out some of the daylight um, with that um, big curtain so yeah. yeah yeah I think we'll go more into it obviously um, when we do the van tour we'll sort of talk a bit more about it but yes don't be disgruntled about what you see on YouTube because a lot of uh, a lot of the setups that you see are just yeah, so expensive. They're so expensive and so insane, and and like it's they're cool epic. to see. Like if, yeah, if that's yeah. you know if that's in your budget, then sweet, like go for it. If if that was in our budget, I would have that set up as well. But just don't. If you're watching it and and, and you're wanting to do a trip, you know. Yeah, don't, don't feel like you have to. Don't get yeah. it in your head that you are that you need that setup because you definitely don't. You definitely don't. But yeah. yeah. Anyway, we'll uh we'll go through it all. Like we'll go through our setup, and um, I mean we're. We're as comfy as hell. This is the yeah. comfiest camping we've had in yeah. our life. So. <laughs> like obviously, our van is not like as like insta worthy <laughs> as a lot um, of the other vans around. Um, but I mean, as long as you're happy to have something that's not the most pretty, um, it's fine. And Seems we've made pretty, it look man. home. Yeah, it's you nice. like it? <laughs> pretty, yeah. Look at this veneer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But oh, yeah, good. so we're having some brekkie and then we're going to um, probably pack up pretty shortly. We might have a little look around the campsite again um, now that it's, or, although actually it started raining, so maybe not. We'll see. Mm. Anyway, we're going to pack up and we're heading um, northeast toward Mount Magnet, which is about another three hours. Um, and there's a little free camp that we're planning to set up um, just north of Mount Magnet. Hey. So yeah, we'll take you along.
you. Good to see you. Hi, Lo. Hi. Dear Sam, we've stopped to have a look at all the wildflowers, which are surprisingly out already. It's like the middle of winter. Um, but this road, this is a great northern highway, reminds us heaps of Nullarbor. Really low lying trees, beautiful red soil. But Nullarbor did not have wildflowers like this. Check this. Oh, look how big they are! Oh my gosh. You go. Right. Yeah, sorted. Coffee time? Yeah, a couple of coffees, a couple of sangers. Wise having a little play and a bit of a munch on some dirt. <laughs> yeah, I'll have a bit of a break before we get back on the road. <laughs> Where are you going, Lila? You're going to be so dirty. We thought we'd um, take a minute. To say thank you guys so much for subscribing and following along our journey um it's been really nice like connecting with people and and seeing people subscribing and sort of i guess being interested in what we're sharing because we were never sure whether people would want to watch what we're up to mm. um but we got so much out of watching other people um on youtube like doing what we're doing before we left getting ideas and sort of i guess like inspiration so um, we're so excited and, and really happy that we can do that for you guys. So thanks heaps again for, for subscribing and following along. And um, yeah, if you've got any questions or anything, always feel free to, to drop us a comment below or connect with us on Instagram. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we're always an open book, happy for a chat. Um, so yeah. Yeah, and if you're new to the channel and you've, you've just started watching, um, hitting that subscribe button really helps out the channel grow and um, like reach new people. So yeah, if you could um, hit the subscribe button or the like button, that would be awesome. So yeah, anyway, on another note, um, basically we just pulled up on the side of the road at like a little rest stop, um, which is what we often do on our travel days, just to basically break it up a little bit. We pull up, like drive for maybe two hours or an hour and a half or something. Um, and then we'll pull up and just mm. make a coffee in the van, make some sangers or whatever, and give, give a chance yeah. to crawl around. Mm. So yeah, it sort of just breaks the day up and makes it a bit easier. So mm. we're pretty well just stopped for half or an hour or something and have some lunch and a bit of a look around. Like it's, I'll give you a bit of a look at where we are. Yeah, it's pretty well just like a little roadside stop, like. That truck go past. Yeah, this is just the main highway. Um, this is just our little, uh, uh, the little other lunch thing stop. I wanted to say too is if you're traveling on like you know a budget, which I mean most people are traveling on some sort of budget, being able to stop on roadside stops like this and use what you've got in the van. I mean you've got all your cooking facilities, you've got your groceries, you've got everything there. It saves you heaps of money, so you can just stop and have like you know make yourself lunch, make yourself a coffee. Like obviously you want to stop when you've got like nice places to visit but if you're just stopping like literally to feed yourself rather than paying money at a, a servo which are kind of gross sometimes anyway you may as well stop at a place like this and make yourself lunch so that's one way we save money absolutely hmm. anyway that's what we do although on another side note if you are stopping at these places tell your rubbish with you like this is just blows my mind that you come out to places like this and it's just like there's literally bins like just over here, um, you know, there's there's coffee cups and stuff just sitting around everywhere, like, start your bus, and, like, you know, come out here and have a coffee and stuff, happy days, but just, there's bins right there, just chuck in the mint, you know, it's it's not hard, anyway, that's uh, my little rant, but it just, it seems to be like, yeah, pretty common, like, sort of tre a bit of a trend at every single roadside stop there's just trash everywhere so anyway won't rant too much about it but i'm sure it's not you guys who are watching though. probably isn't no <laughs> yeah so anyway and if it is just pull your head in and go and chuck it in the middle so we jumped back in the car and started making our way towards mount magnet a little town just north of where we were stopped we had if you head straight through mount magnet about 15 minutes north there's a little camping area 
which I think it's called Old Winyangu Parking Area. Um, it's a roadside stop, and you can pretty well just drive into the bush there, and there's a wiki camps pin. You can sort of camp anywhere. There's 100,000 spots here. Um, you can go as far or as close to the road as you want. And, yeah, it's a really good little spot to sort of explore the area. So we set up here, and, yeah, it's a great little spot. been through Mount Magnet and had a little look. It's quite small um, so there wasn't a whole lot going on but still really interesting to have a look. Um, and now we're on like a little tourist drive that's out to sort of the back side of the town um, leading back up to the free camp that we've set up at. Um, and it's actually quite interesting. So this area um, is like a gold mining area so I think it's like 1891 it was first discovered that there was gold here and they were mining so there's lots of like historical stuff um, like old miners cottages and stuff however they're still mining gold here so you can actually see behind me um, open pit so they've got both open and underground mining happening here still so um, looking out over the landscape it actually looks really cool especially if you've not really seen um, mines before definitely worth having a look we are up at um, Warambu I think it's called Warambu Lookout um, so if you find you can find it on wiki camps definitely worth coming up and having a look and you'll see the view it is pretty insane wow so this one's called the amphitheater still along the same tourist drive really cool it almost looks like they're like cross hatched or like slashed or something like weird um i think it's called like fracture patterns in the rock very strange. Pan, shout out to Pan. She would know <laughs> if you're watching this. That's ridiculous. It's like a spider web, eh? It must be like a dingo den or something. Um, a little bit creepy. Like bones and. Oh, there is too. Yeah, it's like a carcass down here. Like all bones. <laughs> sketchy, eh? A little bit of a snack. Yeah, well, hopefully they don't come home while they're. Uh, Around. Yeah. All the little flowering bushes are just so cool. So we're um, going along that tourist route like I was saying um, and I have full 4G reception and Reese has no reception. We just changed my phone over to Telstra um, the other day because we had heard that this was a problem. <laughs> so if you are traveling, um, one tip that we would give you that we've just learned is um, to put at least one of your phones on Telstra. And we actually reckon sometimes Optus was better too, hey? Sometimes, yeah. A couple Not of, as okay, often. Yeah. In a few spots you get better Optus, but mm. so far uh, Telstra has definitely been the winner. In WA for sure. Yeah, yeah. We haven't really had that problem anywhere else, no, really. Yeah. Like, reception's no. been pretty fine all along, like, the southern end of um, Australia yeah. most of the time. But since being in WA, having one Optus, one um, Telstra has been amazing. That's it. Yeah. And then you can just hotspot, like, the other sure. person can just hotspot. Jump on Netflix tonight, watch a movie yeah. out in the middle of nowhere, which would be <laughs> Luxury, yeah. life luxury. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hot tip. <laughs> Change that phone to Telstra, even yeah. though it's more expensive. Good morning. We had a really nice night here at, um, well, I have to look up what it's called. I'll, um, I'll put it on the screen. Um, but we had a really nice fire that Reese collected. Some firewood, there's heaps of firewood on the ground here, which is good. Um, and then he made us a yummy um, chicken and um, rice sort of like casserole thing in the um, fire pit. And um, yeah, we just had a bit of a quiet night and um, Lila slept really well again, which was good. 
So today I have scored a day's work at the local um, high school. So I'm heading into work in a minute, or Reese is going to drop me into work. And then Reese and Lila are going to have a daddy daughter day. So um, yeah, we'll let you know how we go. So I've just finished uh, changing the fuel filter out in the car. Um, Sarah's, Sarah's going to do a day of work today. So it's uh, just me and Lai out here. Um, so I thought, while she's asleep, I took the opportunity quickly to uh, change a fuel filter out because that was due. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd give you a bit of a look at this camp spot we, where we are. Because um, it's pretty sick. I mean, the flies are thick as hell. I don't know whether, maybe I'm stinky. I don't know. <laughs> far, far out. There's hundreds of them. But um, anyway, I'll give you a bit of a look. So this is... This is our spot, absolute middle of nowhere, it's just a free camp outside of Magic Mountain, is it Magic Mountain? Mount Magic, something like that, um, but yeah, lies asleep in the van, which is working out sick, and uh, I'll truck the drone up and give you a bit of a look. Yeah, it's alright, how was yours? Not bad, there was a total of like probably 30 kids in the entire school, 7 to 10. Wow. Wow. <laughs> different, but it was really cool, really liked it, it was a different sort of experience. Not bad for a little after school excursion. This place is so pretty. It's called um, the Granites and it's just outside of Mount Magnet. Look at the um look at the colours. Silver white, eh? Hey? Strange area because like the um you'll you'll see in the uh you'll see in the drone footage, like just over the top of this ridge is just like flat. Like this is sort of just like a dropped area. Yeah. So like that that line there just goes straight for like hundreds of Ks. Yeah, and this line like runs pretty yeah, far down. Definitely an interesting place to come and look at, but I wouldn't um, I wouldn't plan like a long time here. But it's it's definitely worth stopping over. Yeah, if you're passing through, like if, if this is on your route somewhere. Like, yeah, it's a pretty unique. Yeah, I've never seen this one. Mm. And the community seemed really nice. Like working at the school, there were lots of um, people like obviously who live here working at the school. They were really lovely. Um, but yeah, I think um, so. We did find out swimming pool is only open. Um, spring and summer or like you know spring summer autumn it's definitely not open during winter yeah, so poor old Gracie had a bit of a um a bit of a slow day today yeah. <laughs> no reception at least you had the car today that's good yeah. I had heaps of flies to hang out with flies <laughs> out here are friendly as there's hundreds and once the wind like once the breeze picks up a bit they're not too bad but mm. man when it's uh when the wind when it's still they're just Swimming. We're not even, I don't think we're even in like bad fly country yet. Little lie, they were sucking the moisture out of her eyeballs. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. <yuck. laughs> it's pretty average. They're, uh, they're the type of flies too that you shoo and they're that eager that they actually don't leave. Yes. You've got to like yeah. almost grab them and like throw Get them Get them off. off, yeah. Worst. Anyhow, cool. Cool area. Definitely, definitely worth coming to look at. We have just finished packing up at this awesome little free camp um, and we are now heading north. We're heading towards um, Q, just um, west, no, yeah, just west of Q is a little um, stopover we're really keen to check out. It's called Walga Rocks and then um, we're going to head north past Mikathara and into, I think it's called Billion mm -hmm. Pools is where we're aiming to camp tonight, so another free spot. This is part one of our Great Northern Highway road trip, which is going to be a three-part little mini-series. 
So thanks heaps for watching and stay tuned for next week, part two. We check out the Uluru of Western Australia and um, a spooky little ghost town. So it should be a good one. So stay tuned for that. If you haven't already, subscribe below and drop us a like on the video. Thanks heaps for watching, guys. So um, where are we camped, Reese? It's definitely not called Magic Mountain. <laughs> I don't know if I'll... We are camped in Mount Magnet. Mount Magnet. <laughs>